What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Proto Art. I'm not gonna lie, this is like the fifth time I tried doing this. Hopefully, this take is good. Uh, but essentially, I wanted to show you how you can create this starting off from this image. Um, we're gonna do some compositing today. So, first thing you want to do before you get into compositing is you want to think about your lighting source, your, your uh, the lighting direction, I should say. Uh, so, if you're get a little brush here. If your lighting, for my example, is coming down, let me make this brush a little smaller. So my lighting source is basically coming from downwards, like at this angle. Um, so you want to kind of keep your lighting similar to what your main background is going to be. So I know like the lighting from here is going straight down. Right, and then these are kind of coming at an angle, but it's close enough where I can blend it together and it looks okay. So you want to think about your lighting direction, you want to think of the perspective. So they're both kind of tilted up. Uh, they're more horizontal than she is, but it's not so far off where you can't tell. And you also want to think about atmospheric things. So for this example, for mine, they're in water. So I know that it's going to be affected by bubbles and you might have like wildlife swimming around and things of that nature. But for you, say if it's like an image in the desert or something, you might have dust particles in the air. You might have, you know, tumbleweed, whatever it may be. Like you want to just kind of keep those things in mind when you're creating your compositing, your composited image. So. I used Unsplash for this background, but you can use whatever source you want, but they have like really high quality images, so I'd recommend checking them out, it's free. So the next thing I want to do was separate the people from the background and the lady. I want to get rid of her and just keep the water. So there's a lot of ways to do, th to do that. I just use the lasso selection tool here. You can also use the pen tool or this, uh, what's it called, the quick, quick selection? Object selection tool. Does the same thing. Select your image, take that off. You want to have like a good selection of your image. Of course, you want to adjust your mask once you have your image chosen. You want to refine it a little bit. And once you have that all how you like it, you choose new layer with layer mask, and that's going to create a brand new layer so you can work non destructively. Because if you want to make changes later on, you won't be able to unless you do it this way. Um, so I did the same thing with the, the guys, removed them from the background. So now that I had my background free of the lady and the guys and on their own layer, I was all, I'd also recommend feathering when you're making that selection. So it's just a little softer, but I realized that they didn't quite match the, the brightness. So let me hide these real fast. It's a lot of stuff going on here. Also, really important to label your things because you can easily get lost within your Photoshop file. Um, bring this over. Okay. So they are on their own layer. So I darkened up the uh, guys here, just creating adjustment layers. We're going to use a lot of those for this example. Just hit in the little, the little circle here and make a adjustment layer using levels. So when you have that created, it's important to clip it for this example, I clipped it to the guys. If I didn't have this clipped and I were to try to adjust the brightness and darkness, it would change that for the overall image. So I don't want that, you know, I don't want to affect that. So I just wanted them to be darker. Uh, so let me leave that. So it's important to clip it. So if you never clipped anything before, you just hit this little square here and then we'll clip it to the, whatever layer is right below it. Shortcut in Photoshop, you can also hold down Option and it'll turn that into like a little square when you're kind of between the layers and it, it allows you to clip or unclip things. So I created a levels adjustment, then I created a curves adjustment. Curves is really similar to layers, so but it allows you uh, slightly more control. So not only can you control the highlights and the shadows, uh, but you, you can also do that with individual colors. So I did that with the reds. I darkened up the, the highlights and then I darkened up the highlights overall and brought up the shadows overall. And a quick and really powerful uh, way to use the curves is if you're, if you want to create uh, highlights and shadows, like you want to fake it, you basically create two curves 
you want to label them highlights darks whatever you want to call it for this example for the dark you bring it all the way down almost and the highlights you can bring it all the way over and then you hide your mask by inverting it by hitting command i and it hides the mask so now with it hidden um all you have to do now is paint back in the area that you want to have affected so like i had highlights so i can like choose the layer of mask when that's selected and choose a brush you can essentially paint in your highlights uh, where you want them so I can create some fake highlights there so I'm just gonna uh, undo that alrighty zoom back out moving right along so now that I had my highlights and shadows kind of where I wanted them, because I know that they're in water, shadows are going to be on their um, the bottom here, and the highlights going to be on top. I wanted to add a blur because I know they're in water. So I duplicated this. I created a group first and merged it all together. And then I, I added a blur by choosing that layer, going to filters, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Blurred it. And then with a the mask, I basically erased away the blur layer, revealing the layer that was in focus. So I'm creating like a fake depth of field. Um, just meaning like whatever is closest to me will be uh, clear, more in view. Uh, after I did that, again, I made another, made another copy. Um, and then from here, I started playing around with the color. So adding a color adjustment layer, a color, color balance layer. So getting rid of some uh, the yellow and the green and the red and just kind of made it more blue. I know it doesn't look realistic, but it looked appeasing to my eye. So I added a color filter after that, or a photo filter. Same thing. So added a photo filter. And you can play around with that. There's a lot of them to choose from, and you can play around with how intense you want them to be. How You know, you can get real exaggerated with it. You can choose like a warmer color or whatever you want. After I did that, I was almost done. So I knew that I'm in water, so I wanted to add atmospheric things. So I added bubbles. Again, I went back to the Unsplash website and got a picture of some bubbles. I'll bring this opacity up so you can see. The original looked like this. And if you're not familiar how to get rid of black in Photoshop, screen, you set that to screen and it gets rid of the black. And vice versa, if you want to get rid of white, you set it to multiply. So I did that. I set this to screen. Oops. There you go. And then lower the opacity to around like of the group overall to around 60%. So it's good to have multiple images to work from. So you don't want to have like the same photo over and over because it's just, it, it makes it more realistic and it's easier to fake it. I didn't, I just used the same image and just kind of flipped it around and rotated it, warped it a little bit, but I masked away, if you see there, um, some of the bubbles I didn't want. Almost done. It looks pretty good there. Um, the final step, I merged it all together. Um, if you don't have uh, this plugin called Color Effects Pro, it's from the uh, Nike or Nike collection you can do the same thing by just merging all your layers together create a new layer you're going to duplicate that layer first you're going to sharpen this because i'll show you what the final effect looked like it was this but if you don't have that bundle you just basically merge it duplicate it you want to sharpen it you can go to uh what's this thing called Do -do -do -do. high pass filter and you want to play around with this until uh, your image starts coming into focus. You don't want to have it too intense. You change your blending mode to like hard light or soft light. Of course, you want to like lower the opacity to your whatever you think looks good to you. Um, I would create another layer, probably another two actually, make one for shadows and one for highlights. And all I did really was paint around the border of this image. So let's do a shadow. I'll just have this really exaggerated right now. Large soft brush and kind of paint it around and of course you drop down your opacity and you do the same for like your highlights so you can make like a white one paint around 
lower the opacity. And you can create like a little one in the middle, dab that a couple times, lower the opacity. So you can create a pretty similar effect. Let me mer you know put these in a group so you can compare. So it's not exactly the same, but you can kind of get there with repetition. Um, but if you do have that bundle, all I did was bring it into Color Effects Pro. Uh, I think it was like the Detail Extractor and uh, some Vignette Filter. But yeah, that was the final product there. So I know I went through this kind of quickly, but hopefully you can kind of understand the layer stacks and the process of uh the the thought process of creating a composite anyway guys hopefully you enjoyed and you were able to follow along i know that was that was a lot <laughs> but hopefully it was entertaining um i will talk to you guys soon but before i go be sure to like subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out on another video from the proto art all right guys